Hello, this is Dr. Ford Brewer. Let's start off with a couple of questions today. First of all, <clears throat> is sugar really a culprit? Is it addictive? Or is a calorie a calorie? Whether it's a sugar calorie, carbo uh, complex carbohydrate, um, protein, fat. Um, <clears throat> I would tell you as a doc, it was just up until a few years ago that I felt the latter. I felt like a calorie is a calorie is a calorie. Um, there's a, a pediatric endocrinologist though at uh, UC San Francisco who says, no, that's not at all the case. Um, well, let's assume that he's right. His name is Robert Lustig and we'll talk, we're going to talk about his book fat chance today. Let's assume that he's right. Let's say that sugar is actually even addictive, as he says. And there are there's an epidemic of sugar addiction out there. If that's true, uh, whose fault is it? Uh, he goes to great extent in his book to destigmatize this issue. He says it's not the victim's fault. Again, he says sugar is addictive. Unlike alcohol and uh, tobacco and other addictive uh, things, food is something we have to have. Um, <clears throat> so he's either blaming big business, which he does, or he's blaming the government, which he does. So let's talk a little bit about his book today. Fat Chance by uh, Robert Lustig. Sugar? Processed Food, Obesity, and Disease. This is a, uh, to me, it's a big book. It's very, very uh, deep into my own space, my own legacy of trying to work with, or working with people to, and trying to move this type 2 diabetes epidemic back, uh, and therefore prevent all of the heart attacks, stroke, disability, associated with it. Again, I'm Ford Brewer, PrevMed, Heart Attack and Stroke uh, Prevention. <clears throat> Dr. Robert Lustig wrote, uh, first gave a, um, a uh, YouTube. It was 90 minutes. It was a presentation and it was titled Sugar, the Bitter Truth. Based on that, the, he got an overwhelming response to this and based on that response, he wrote a book. And the book is what we're reviewing today. Now, <clears throat> uh, what happened to Dr. Um, Lustig and what made him such an activist? Well, <clears throat> colleagues used to send a letter to uh, patients, colleagues in the in endocrine uh, area. So Dr. Um, Lustig started off as an endocrinologist, pediatric endocrinologist at St. Jude's Hospital in Memphis. Uh, he describes uh, episodes there where colleagues used, in the endocrine program used to send a letter to the parents of children that were referred for pediatric obesity. And the letter basically went like this. This is a problem of diet and exercise, uh, Mr. or Miss Parent, this is not an in endocrine problem, and please go back to your pediatrician. We're not going to deal with it. Again, Dr. Um, Lustig goes to pretty great lengths in his book, um, Fat Chance, to make to destigmatize this issue. A couple of things that he points out are the kids that come in and the huge increase in obesity, zero to six months old. Again, these kids aren't even feeding themselves, let alone exercising or making food choices. Um, you could say that that's a parental problem, but again, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't go there. He tends to, to blame big business and government. Now, how does he blame big business? Well, for purposefully engineering food such that it's addictive. Uh, he does go into the medical detail around addiction. Things like um, af after you take enough of a substance, then you need more to get an impact. That happens with alcohol. It happens with tobacco and other addictive substances. It doesn't happen with fat, according to him, but it does happen with sugar. 
uh, things that uh, like it impacts your life and your work. Well, obviously, uh, obesity does, and he's making the leap that uh, obesity is due to sugar. Um, <clears throat> I don't think these are huge leaps, by the way. I actually tend to agree with most of what I'm hearing here. Um, Let's, let's go to what made Dr. Lustig, or at least the episode that he says made him a, um, a political activist for this issue. He was seeing a one-year-old patient, or excuse me, a six-year-old patient. The patient was uh, 100 pounds. And he asked the mom, he was going through the diet with the mom. The mom was uh, Hispanic. So uh, she described that the child was drinking a gallon of orange juice a day. And so Dr. Uh, Lustig said, fruit bueno, jugo malo. Uh, and that is, a, actually that's a, a misunderstanding or that's a concept that is a big debate uh, these days. And a lot of people are unaware of the impact of juice, fruit juice, on your insulin reaction. The, the response that he got from the mom, though, was what got him going as a, a political activist in this area. She said, well, if juice is bad, why are we getting it on the WIC program? It's a good question. <clears throat> Uh, many people would say, well, the FDA, and Dr. Lustig actually does say that, that the FDA has never really been focused on health. The FDA has been more of a, a uh, shill or a puppet to the, uh, to the agricultural industry. Um, I don't know, maybe he's right. <clears throat> he does spend his time focusing on two sugars. He said there are two sugars that are the major culprits here. They are uh, fructose and sucrose. Sucrose, which is quickly broken down into glucose and fructose. Um, fructose is the, the sugar that's found in fruit and fruit juices. So why isn't fruit a problem? Because it has so much fiber. And again, he uh, makes the point time and time again that Sugar's bad, fiber's good, and fiber does decrease the uptake of um, sugars into our bloodstream. So it slows down the glycemic index. Um, <clears throat> so here, there are two major issues that I want to hit a couple of times in this uh, discussion of uh, Fat Chance by Dr. Robert Lustig. The first one is this whole issue of saying, um, well, look, this is really a government, um, big business, more government issue than anything else, because big business is going to do what they can to make foods addictive by adding sugars. And then, along with the sugars, adding um, caffeine, fats to make them taste really good, lots of calories. Um, the other part, so, so as you get deeper into this question, uh, the question is, well, who's responsible? If he says the government, then why is he telling us that as a, uh, an individual, here's what you can do to avoid this problem? The second question is, is this something we already know? Um, so let's go back and, and look at a couple of other uh, reviews on this. One of them was from, um, from The Guardian. The Guardian is uh, a left-leaning uh, uh, media outlet in the, uh, or not media outlet, it's a le left-leaning journal in, uh, in Great Britain. They focused on this political issue. Uh, most of what the world sees as behavior, uh, meaning is meaning the actions we choose to do or not do through free will. However, the, the dictionary definition of behavior is a stereotyped motor response to a physiological stimulus. In other words, 
Lustig, this is Lustig's perspective. Um, behavior is not necessarily a free choice. It's just a response to a stimulus. Now, <clears throat> the New Oxford Dictionary, which is quoted by The Guardian, says, um, doesn't say that. It has a different um, definition of behavior, which implied more free choice. Um, <clears throat> I personally think that that's a little bit of a weak criticism of the book. Uh, yes, there is free choice. Yes, there, uh, our behaviors are on a moment-by-moment -moment basis more of a, a uh, stimulus response. But we, we as adults, at least, can make changes on our own uh routine response to stimuli. For example, we can choose, we can make a choice. Am I going to eat cereal for breakfast every day? Am I going to eat pizza and, uh, uh, well, am I going to eat sugars? Am I going to go to McDonald's? And if I go to McDonald's, am I going to get a, uh, a happy meal or a, or a supersized uh, meal? Or am I going to get a salad? By the way, he goes into McDonald's, and I'll uh, just uh, cover a couple of points about McDonald's. McDonald's uh, does say they're trying to make some efforts in terms of um, healthy foods. This is the McDonald's Alliance Partnership. They say they have five commitments to, uh, to improve health. For example, the first one is... Feature only water, milk, and juice as the beverage in Happy Meals on menu boards, in-store, and in external Happy Meal advertising. Well, and they say they're well on the way to meeting that. The two places, they've hired this outside group to look at their progress, and the outside group is looking at the biggest market, the U.S. and Italy. Um, here's the next thing they've committed to do. Offer customers a choice of side salad, fruit, or vegetable as a substitute for French fries in their value meals. So that's a good thing, too. Substitute a salad for your... Here, sorry about that. Substitute a salad for French fries in your value meals. Wonderful. Commitment number three. Um... Generate excitement for fruit, vegetable, low re reduced fat calorie, or water with Happy Meal packaging to introduce new options in the Happy Meal. That sounds exciting as well and good and healthy. Commitment number four, use Happy Meal box or bag panel to communicate a fun nutrition or well-being message four times annually. Yes, that's good. Commitment number five, include a fun nutrition or well-being message in 100% of advertising directed to children. Again, all of those sound laudable. Uh, I personally, as a physician who's dealing with this issue as well, immediately look at this and notice that there's nothing in there about reformulating menus. There's nothing in there about reformulating uh, recipes to decrease sugar, to uh, decrease fat. Um, I do think there is a very clear um, desire to make food taste good. Uh, duh, that's what they do for a living. But unfortunately, tasting good is maybe not so far from food being addictive. So <clears throat> we'll talk about it being addictive again in just a minute. So he, um, he quotes Albert Einstein as saying, if the moon, this is an Albert Einstein quote, so everybody respects uh, Dr. Einstein, if the moon in the act of completing its internal, uh, eternal way around the earth were gifted with self-consciousness, it would feel thoroughly convinced that it was traveling in the way of its own accord. So would a being endowed, endowed with higher insight and more perfect intelligence, watching man and his doings smile about man's illusion that he was acting according to his own free will. In other words, Einstein is saying, we think we're acting on free will, but we're not. Um, so let me remind you, Dr. Uh, 
Lustig is a pediatric endocrinologist. Again, his his first work as a doc had to do with dealing with children at St. Jude's Hospital in Memphis who basically had no uh, control due to pituitary adenomas and loss of their pituitary control of their adeno uh, of their uh, endocrine system. They did not have that routine uh, control mechanism. He describes the ability to to complete to manage things like thyroid, but not manage the thing uh, things like uh, weight management. He goes into a good bit of detail, and he says this is a book for the lay public. That's sort of like uh, Bale Donine's book. Uh, Bradley Bale and Amy Donine's book on heart attack and stroke prevention, they say that they're for, that this is for the lay public, but uh, it gets a little bit detailed for a lay person. This one does as well. Um, if you've read uh, How We Get Fat and What to Do About It, you'll realize that basically as an endocrinologist, he's supporting that fact that anything that stimulates insulin causes fat deposition, uh, but he goes far deeper in terms of uh, describing the impact of insulin on uh, leptin, uh, the, thing that, the hormone that's supposed to decrease our hunger, and the hormone that's made by fat cells. So <clears throat> there's the question about is this really addictive and which part is addictive? Um, I, he goes through the DSM-4, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, the Psychiatric Manual regarding impact on, uh, on life, impact on family, impact on jobs, impact on uh, uh, other biological impacts. For example, do you have to have an increased um, um, amount in order to get the desired uh, result, the desired feeling. And he points out that of all the food groups or, or, or all the different foods that could pinch, potentially fit there, again, sugar is the one. So what do I think? I think, I think it's a good book. I think he's, uh, there are a couple of key questions. Uh, one about the science, one about the politics and psychology. Um, where he's been criticized, I think maybe, again, as a physician who deals with this every day, I think maybe those criticisms were a little bit harsh. Thank you. Dr. Robert, uh, again, a review on Dr. Robert Lustig's book, Fat Chance.